Hey guys, welcome back to Twin Terry Studio and I made this video quite recently on controller support for Mac OS and I in the video I said that the support is a lot better now and one of the things I noticed while I was making the video was that Apple themselves actually sell the Sony PlayStation 5 controller which is considered to be one of the best controllers out there thanks to the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers is one of the big features that everyone talks about when they say when they talk about their PlayStation 5 and their PlayStation 5 controllers and how much it makes the games a lot better. So I thought maybe I wanna test this out and see how it works on Mac OS. And I also had a comment from John Zoki that said, if you buy the PlayStation 5 controller, it'd be interesting to know if you can change the push feedback of the triggers in the profile settings. So <laughs> I went and bought a PlayStation 5 controller. I got it in black to match the space black of my computer, but I couldn't resist the urge to test this out and to see if I can get it working here on Mac OS. So that's what this video is going to be about today. So basically, I looked it up, I had a look around Reddit, I had a look around all the gaming wikis and discussions, and adaptive triggers really is a thing that the developers have to put into the games themselves, and there's not many Mac games or iOS games. There's a few that support the haptic feedback, and there's a few that support the uh, adaptive triggers according to the internet. I haven't tested any of them out yet, um, but it's mainly iOS games, and there's not many like Mac games. And then there's a list on PC Gaming Wiki, which will help you discover which games truly take advantage. For example, Spider-Man Miles Morales, that takes advantage of it. Obviously, it's a Sony game, The Last of Us, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So all of these work within Steam and it has the, uh, it tells you if it works, if it doesn't work. But one thing I noticed was it says there's custom configurations that require DSX. So when I looked up DSX on Steam, it is a Windows only utility, which kind of put me off a bit, but not to be deterred, I went to the App Store and I found DualSense M, which is by the same developers. Now, this is not free. It is going to cost you, it cost me £3.99. So, if I go to the more section here, you can see the upgrade cost me £3.99 and I've upgraded it. And what this does is it allows you to mess around with the adaptive triggers before you get into a game. So, you can set it how you want if that's uh, something that you want to do. So first, let's connect the controller to the Mac. So to do that, we go to the Bluetooth settings in our Mac and then on our Xbox controller, let me just make myself large. Then on our, no, I'm so used to saying Xbox controller. Then on our PlayStation controller, you press the PlayStation button down and the share button. Is that the share button? Yes, the share button. And so you just hold them down until it starts to Pulse. Then we go back to our Bluetooth settings here and we'll see DualSense wireless controller. Click connect. So like I said, when I go to the game controller settings, click info and go to the game controller settings. I can identify it, but then if I go into the settings, it only has the haptic feedback and it has nothing to do with the adaptive triggers themselves, which is why I downloaded DualSense M just to play around with it and see what it is that makes this controller so special. So you see we've got a connection. Uh, the battery is currently at 55%, tells me the battery reading. Um, I can change the color of the, the LED lights. So if I change it just, just to show you that it works, if you look in the bottom left corner of the screen, I'll change it to red, I'll change it to, or if I really wanted to, I can just make like a nice rainbow and then mess around with the hyper fast pull, the pulse of the LED. Or if I really wanted to, I could just turn it all off. Change the brightness all the way down. You can also set the rumble, the motors to go if you want to test the strength and speed of the motors. And then on the trigger section here, this is where the fun begins. Um, you can, it has a bunch of it has a bunch of presets already, so it has the GameCube trigger one, which is the one that I'm interested in because uh, I'm going to be using this to play Dolphin. If I play it, and then when I... So I'm going to change it. And then when I press down my trigger, let's do it in front of the... 
it has a resistance to it and it does actually kind of feel like a GameCube controller. I don't have my GameCube controllers with me here in this country, but if I did, I'd definitely be wanting to test that out. That's actually pretty damn good. It's a pretty good uh, replication of the GameCube controller there using the adaptive triggers. So there's a bunch of them. I'm going to set a couple up now just to show you. So I'm going to start with a very hard trigger on the left one. And then on the right trigger, I'm just going to have a nice little... We'll go with a soft trigger. So I'll apply, apply both of them. And then on the controller itself. So the right one was a soft trigger. And there is actually pressure. Yeah, that one feels a lot. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't realize like how. So let's let's put a vibrating vibrating trigger with 10 intensity on this one let's test this out large you can probably hear that I, I think that's for shooters maybe I don't know why you'd want that it, unless it like does multiple clicks I'm not sure um, and then on some of them you can auto also change settings as well so the bow trigger you can choose the force, the start, the end, the snap force. They have a bunch of custom settings that you can make as well with resistance, uh, custom trigger values for each different force, um, different types. You can play around with this as much as you want and set up the triggers for the games that you're playing. So let's say I was playing on my on Dolphin, I click GameCube trigger, GameCube trigger, apply both. Can also it also has options with the usb uh, the audio from the us the audio if you have it plugged in via usb and you have a headset plugged in so see so you can see on this left shoulder when i'm pushing down that's minimal pressure so i have to put a little bit of extra pressure on to get over that you can also just test to see if your button inputs are all working. Maybe if you have stick drift or anything like that in the input section. So when I close DualSense M, it's still, still working. And then let's see what happens when I quit it. So I quit DualSense M. I've quit DualSense M and the settings are still applied. So I can go about playing my game and these adaptive triggers will be set up until I turn the controller off and then the second I hold down the PlayStation button to turn the controller off it takes a while to go off for some reason the triggers are back to normal and they're not stuck in that so that is pretty good I'm just going to turn the controller on to see if it saved those settings I need to connect oh it's connected and no, the settings did not save. So every time you want to mess around with the settings, you have to open Dual Sensor M. That is good to know. So there you have it. <laughs> if you want to know how to mess around with the adaptive triggers and connect your PlayStation 5 controller to your Mac to play some games, that's that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you've liked this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. It really does help this channel grow. Uh, I like to make videos like this where I just test things, mess around with emulators and other stuff like that. So if that's something you're kind of interested in, the subscribe button doesn't, it's not the worst thing you can do in the world. And hitting like takes a couple of seconds. Anyway, take care. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.